Are you ready, kids? This channel. No! No! Starting off the news this week, NASA's InSight Martian lander has detected the first ever Mars quake. The things the we do for science. Starting off the news this week, a study published in the journal Nature Geoscience has detailed an explanation as to why the magnetic North Pole has been moving so rapidly in recent years. Here's a quick image on screen now to show you just how quickly it's been moving from Canada over to Russia since 1840, with a large amount of acceleration in the last 20 years. The researchers say that far underneath the Earth's surface, on the edge of the outer core, two colossal magnetic blobs are in competition with one another, constantly changing their flow and therefore altering the position of Earth's magnetic field, which in turn alters the position of Earth's magnetic North Pole. In other news, a study published in the journal Nature Communications has revealed experiments into a fungal microorganism called Microsporidia mb, which is the exceedingly promising property of protecting mosquitoes from being infected with malaria. Malaria was responsible for around 400,000 deaths in 2018, and is mainly present on the continent of Africa. While malaria deaths have dropped significantly in the last decade, lots of work still needs to be done in order to further decrease the malaria death rate. Microsporidia MB then has been hailed by the joint UK-Kenyan team to have enormous potential, and have started investigating the possibility of releasing mosquitoes infected with this microorganism into the wild. Very promising stuff. Next up is a recent paper describing the new discovery of a late Cretaceous aged mammal from Madagascar. Named Adelotherium huey, the fossils of this creature are very complete and well articulated, and it's been found to be a member of Gondwanotheria, a very poorly known group of Mesozoic animals that, before now, were only known from a single cranium and some jaws and teeth. This new discovery is therefore the most complete specimen of a Gondwanan Mesozoic mammal found so far, as well as one of the largest known. Additionally, unique features of the skeleton indicate that the Adelotherium lineage has probably been isolated on Madagascar for over 20 million years. And now over to Ben. Thanks Doug. Also in the news this week is a very interesting study that's looked at the differences in tooth carbon isotopes in specimens of the American dromaeosaur Deinonychus. What this research has found is that the smaller teeth belonging to the dinosaurs were more enriched in carbon, while the larger teeth were more depleted in it. What does this mean? Well, it's an indication of a shift in diet as the animals grew, with the younger dromaeosaurs feeding on smaller but trophically higher prey than the larger adults. This therefore seems to indicate that dromaeosaurs such as Deinonychus were more similar to asocial modern reptiles in their dietary shifts as they grew, and were not like modern mammalian hunters that employ methods of complex social hunting. The paper explains how the traditional view of dromaeosaurs, or raptors, as pack hunters is a problematic way to think of them, as this sort of highly coordinated group hunting isn't often seen in modern archosaurs, and the fact that young and old Deinonychus individuals ate different prey is considered evidence against pack hunting. So an interesting paper, I look forward to seeing how this develops. Also before our final story, the paleontology news this week has of course been dominated by the new Spinosaurus discovery, but we made a whole video on that a few days ago, so be sure to watch that if you haven't already to find out more about the new look of Spinosaurus. And finally is a paper that technically came out last week, but it's pretty important and unfortunately we missed it before. Turns out the tiny monster is a vertebrate again, or is it? 
new research from the same team that found Tully Monstrum to be a vertebrate before has used in situ Raymond microspectroscopy to look at the chemical signatures of the fossils of this animal and others from the same beds, discovering that they could essentially plot the differences between the fossilization products found in invertebrates and vertebrates, which grouped into separate, non-overlapping regions. The study finds that the tiny monster groups with the other vertebrates in terms of the chemical signatures of its soft tissue, therefore providing some good evidence in favour of it being a vertebrate again. However, other researchers have cautioned that while this is good evidence, it's not necessarily the end to the mystery of tiny monstrum. <sighs> I honestly didn't think my tiny monster video would be outdated this soon, but that's paleontology. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. I I didn't even say anything. Anyway, that's it for this week's Seven Days of Science. Do hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful week. As always, we'll see you on Sunday.